Hi, my name is Bill Ritchie. A Northwest perspective on the media arts begins with printmaking, and the oldest form of printmaking is stencil or silk screen. We made videotapes on screen printing workshops in 1970 and 1984, and the following tape is a result. I asked Ken Auville and Steve French, who were teaching the screen printing workshop in 1970, to explain some of the processes of serigraphy, as it is sometimes called. Most of the examples on the wall are done uh, with the photo stencil, which is a gelatin-like material that is sensitive to light and through processing by um, exposing to ultraviolet light through a positive through a through a film which is uh, made up of opaque and clear areas um, the stencil film can be exposed and um, then through processing the film by developing and washing it out uh, uh, the areas that are appear to be black on the positive are cleared on the film and allow the um, paint to go through when printing. To do this, uh, we use an ultraviolet light and um, expose for a certain amount of time. And a plastic backing on the film will hold the, film, hold the image together until it's placed against the screen. Uh, someone has a photo stencil on the screen here. The screen, incidentally, is made of uh, silk that's stretched tightly over a frame. and. Uh, this is blocked out partly, but uh, <coughs> the areas that are not blocked out will allow paint to pass through and uh, uh, print the image in, on the paper underneath. To print this stencil, all she has to do is put it into the put the frame on the baseboard, lock it in place with hint, with uh, pins. <coughs> to print paint is put on the screen, the top surface of the screen. This is kind of a heavy, grease-like substance. I hope you have enough. You have enough. In the printing process, the paint is simply pulled across the screen with a squeegee, a rubber-bladed tool. And paint passes through the open areas of the screen and down onto the print. Ben is printing a very large uh, stencil here on a very large screen using a kind of transparent ink that uh, mixes with the colors that are printed under it. There are three proofs that he's printed so far. How's it going? And, uh, you get a sense of the similarity. When, when we make serigraphs, we usually make them in uh, what are called additions. And uh, it's just a medium that allows uh, the printer or the artist to uh, do more than one. And so he usually does more than one. How many are you printing uh, today, Ben? Fifteen. Fifteen? Yeah. Photo silk screens seem to preoccupy this workshop's membership, so I asked them how they teach this. Ken Oval answered first, and then Steve French. We started with the uh, various processes. Uh, there's four main stencil processes involved. And we started with photographic stencil and uh, moved from there into the, uh, the handmade stencils and introduced them sort of in turn, and then had people work on each of the processes uh, to become familiar with it. One of the interesting things about the uh, screen medium is that uh, in recent years, uh, people have uh, become very involved in using photographic images. And uh, so when we started off the semester, we thought that we'd start with that because it's sort of exciting and interesting, and uh, it's the most difficult thing to do. So we thought we'd start with the most difficult thing, and that way everybody uh, feels uh, very self-confident after that. And. Um, we started with uh, handmade uh, uh, photographic stencils and 
Have you got something there that's like that, a transfer stencil or something like that? One of the workshop students, Pat Austin, explained how she could make a photopositive transparency by taking a magazine photograph, putting it on sticky contact paper, and soaking off the magazine paper with water. Right, this contact paper, uh, clear contact paper, is what uh, makes that it gets anything from a magazine, uh, like this. Oh. This is very tiny. And then uh, the water is run over this so that the back is soaked off and just the ink stays on the contact paper, making a positive. But I think that I, I got very involved in the photographing process for one and uh, uh, worked from bought oh, the there. equipment, That's you know, and gradually worked up from a small image to uh, the enlarged things. I've been experimenting. I've tried tracing paper to see if that would produce a, a photo stencil, and it did, and drawings. This is from a slide. Is this, uh, here's a drawing, it looks like, that you made a uh, photograph Yeah, of. that's the did things I did for the Buzz Cook trial. Who's, oh, wow. That's, that, that's based attorney. right, is it? Yeah. And that's based right on the uh, sketchbook or something? Well, I took the actual drawing and, made and, it. and stuck it on on top of the film and then projected the light through it. So what, what I'm really doing is just trying to see what can happen, uh, what are some of the possibilities. While photo processes were fascinating, it turned out there were three hand processes being used too. Cut stencil, negative glue stencil, and positive glue stencil. Here's Ken Orville again. Well, the other, the other processes are all hand processes. Uh, one of them is uh, the cut stencil, which I think we have somebody working on one over here. This is a lacquer type of uh, material that's in a very thin coating on top of uh, a plastic base. And um, she's cutting out portions of the lacquer film. Uh, these are the areas that she wants to have uh, for printing and leaving the rest of the lacquer film to become the stencil. And to apply this, uh, she'll place a screen on top of it and then melt the lacquer right into the, uh, right into the fabric of the uh, screen. And then she can peel off the backing sheet and leaves these areas that she's cutting out open for printing. Uh, this is one type of a cut stencil. Another type is uh, can use just simply utilize tracing paper or some thin paper and every place that uh, is open on the screen uh, then can be uh, you simply cut out the areas that are going to print and uh, attach it to the bottom of the screen and then go ahead and print. The paper will block the ink from going uh, onto the printing paper. Probably the paper stencil is the simplest and fastest process to use uh, for printing. Then another process involves uh, simply painting on glue. Um, we're talking about this screen as a, the photo stencil in this screen, but she's modified this image quite a bit by painting on certain areas of glue in the open spots on the screen, and these will block the ink when, uh, when printing and will serve as, uh, simply as a, as a stencil. This is a <coughs> LePage's, you know, LePage's glue, and it is one of the few glues left <coughs> that uh, you can still dissolve after it dries. Of course, if you didn't dissolve it, then you would have to change yourself, obviously. And out here in the border, the glue has been used also to block off uh, areas that weren't uh, um, keep paint from going through the, the border areas. If the glue is painted on directly, it's what we call a negative stencil. That is, you just draw or paint the glue on the screen in all the areas you don't want to print. And <coughs> or we can use a wax, a soft wax, and um, apply these to the screen in all the areas that uh, are going to print eventually and then spread glue over these. Well, glue cannot stick to the wax and uh, then it will, uh, so that's like a resist the glue just fills in all the areas that are not waxed. And um, then uh, the wax is washed out once the glue is dry in those areas that were waxed and it'll be open for printing. After they had explained these principal techniques, I asked Ken and Steve the reasons they themselves had chosen screen printing as an art form. And Ken said it was because of the color and versatility that made it valuable to him as a printmaker, 
and Steve said it was because of its nature as an extension of his painting. The thing that sold me on it was the kind of color thing that didn't happen with it. Uh, it's one of the few print media that you can really use uh, color uh, in, a, in a broad variety of ways. As you can produce, uh, you can print color that is glossy or matte, or you can print very transparently and build up many layers of it to get a certain luminosity of surface and so on. And uh, because uh, of the simplicity of the equipment, uh, large size prints are easily, uh, do, do large sizes very easily. You can change colors faster with this medium than any other medium, can't you? Well, probably so, because in other mediums where you'd have to build, say, a separate plate for each color, uh, this is simply making a separate stencil, which is usually much faster. Yeah, but even in printing the same stencil, you just clean up the ink and mix a new batch and put it on. Yeah, the, the uh, compound that uh, is used for printing is, uh, is very uh, simple to, well, you can buy it either already prepared and ready to print, or you can use uh, various combinations of uh, clear bases and uh, tinning colors or uh, oil colors and things of this sort. There's Yesterday you showed me a catalog chuck full of uh, different surfaces, and uh, I think that's an important aspect, the fact that you're not limited to printing on paper. What, what other materials do you print on besides paper? Well, you can print on plastic or uh, print on practically anything that's fairly smooth and, uh, and, and clean. Um, you could print on the side of the wall or the floor if you chose to. <laughs> and if you, if you had surfaces you couldn't print on, you could make a decal and stick it on that. Right, you can print on uh, um, uh, pressure-sensitive stock, uh, like uh, you know, like bumper stickers and things like this. Yeah. Um, if you were interested in uh, other techniques like uh, etching, this is still compatible, isn't it? Yeah, you can combine uh, these... Uh, Met different uh, printmaking techniques too. Some of the uh, students have done this, you know, combined etching and, and you can screen print. You can silk screen onto metal plates. Yes, you can use, uh, you can screen onto them and use the, the uh, ink or the paint as a resist for etching. Right. You can screen on lithography stones. Correct. And I think that uh, what Ken was talking about earlier, you and Ken were talking about the versatility of the medium that it will print on almost any surface and you have this tremendous range of uh, possibility of uh, surface treatment not only in terms of different color but uh, also different sheen uh, different uh, surface uh, quality I don't, I don't have any kind of sense of one is more important or better than uh, the other they're just they're just different and they work, you can work back and forth between them quite a few artists have uh, combined painting and screen printing for all for example and uh, yeah, I think, I think that's really important to mention that, that uh, a lot of the interest in the screen, uh, recent interest in the screen comes from uh, Rauschenberg and Warhol's uh, use of photo images in their work. And uh, they use the screen to uh, just print on the surface of the canvas and then they, they sometimes modify or change the image or maybe just leave it to, uh, after it's on the surface of the canvas. And uh, this sort of direct use of photo images has uh, been a tremendous uh, uh, influence, I think, in, in contemporary art. And it comes about mainly through commercial processes that screen printers were using. The use of the photo is so simple in silkscreen, but this simplicity had brought about another kind of problem that I'd heard about, and that was a tendency to use the photo instead of the imagination. I asked Ken Orville about that. There is a problem in using uh, uh, photographs, uh, like from magazines, because the tendency is to, uh, well, the reason why you select a photograph in the first place is usually because uh, there's something attractive about the image. And uh, then the tendency is to sort of leave it alone and just simply reproduce it with the screen medium. And uh, I found this difficulty in my own work uh, that uh, uh, the, the lure of just using the photograph straight is very strong, and <clears throat> but I don't think that that is uh, that is really what I would like to uh, use the photographic medium for. I mean, I'm, I'm using it simply as an extension uh, for um, developing a greater resource of image uh, that can be used, and uh, I feel that simply reproducing a photograph doesn't have much point. I think it's really important to transform them or do something more with them 
And even, even people like Rauschenberg and Warhol, who were really the first people to involve themselves artistically with the photographs, and seemed to use them just the way they came, sort of just accepting them. Um, even they changed them considerably. They gave them new scale. They would print them badly so that uh, they, they would destroy some of the fidelity of the image and uh, did a considerable amount of manipulation to, to um, make the uh, photographs uh, much more personal uh, kinds of statements than, than they were originally. And I don't know how you do I that. asked them about the importance of the fact that screen print can be used to make multiples or editions of original prints. It really I'm bugged by, by all the technique and all the work that goes into the thing. And I just, uh, uh, if I could simplify everything some way and, uh, and just make one, uh, that's really all I need. And uh, I guess I do make more than one usually just because of the medium. It, it will do more than one so use it because it has particular qualities that uh, that are unique to that media and uh, I can say that uh, you know I don't uh, that's the primary reason that I use the media is because of those qualities but uh, the you know having an edition of 25 or 30 prints uh, is kind of an attractive thing too you mean money -wise? simply from the standpoint of uh, the economics of the thing. If you're going to go to all the trouble of making a stencil, you might as well print it several times at least. The teaching assistant, Frank Farrell, had another perspective when it came to the topic of multiples. He compared it to videotape. But the convenience and portability of screen printing and its artistic qualities made it attractive to him. In a way, you know, television is just a series of multiples flipping along. You know, turn that little dial there and it'll start flipping. You know, and that's really kind of incredible. It's sort of another thing I, I want to change my media over to maybe videotape because it's really kind of exciting. Uh, you're working with multiples in all these phases. But I think that uh, as far as silk screening goes, that's kind of what we're talking about. Two things that attract me to silk screening uh, one is its portability. You know, you don't need a big press. Uh, if, uh, with silk screening, you can pretty much carry everything you need in the back of a car if you're moving around a lot. And uh, another thing about it is, like Ken was saying, it's a certain quality you get out of silk screening. You can you can certainly motorize everything and mechan you know make everything mechanical, but it kind of comes out that way. Whereas if you're using techniques that are being used in industry, like commercial uh, photo silkscreen techniques, there's a certain amount of crudeness when it comes out of your basement that gives it that sort of arty quality, I guess. That, you know, people look, yeah, handmade. Oh, oh I, I think that's, you know, that's precious and romantic. Screen printing, or stencil, or serigraphy, hasn't changed much in the past few decades. And in the Northwest, the perspective on screen print hasn't changed much since that videotape was made in 1970, when artists were first discovering the relationship that print had to the other media arts. In 1984, I made another videotape where three artists were collaborating to make an artist's book, or book work, using the medium of screen print. They are Keith Beckley, Jeffrey Bishop, and Dennis Evans, working with the printer Michael Peterson. I telephoned each of the artists later on and asked what the medium meant to them as artists. Jeffrey Bishop is the first person I telephoned. He said the experience was new to him. I came into this somewhat as a, a neophyte. I, I feel like I had to sort of watch what was going on for at least a few hours before I could have any input at all. But So I, I was really sort of uh, um, in a state of uh, just marveling at the whole process. I mean, that's the best thing to do, right? If we're in a double yeah. bump. Yep. He keeps the, the uh, paper down when he lifts it so that we can put it down for the glass bead where you need to put a lot of varnish. Hold off a little while. This has got to sit in the screen. A spray adhesive is used to make the print stay on the table so they will remain in registration. The print would stick to the screen otherwise and registration would be lost. Jeffrey is a painter and a sculptor. I asked him if there was any feedback from his printmaking experience. Um, not, not yet, but we, we made a bunch of, of prints that, that we uh, really haven't used yet, but which each of us uh, sort of, when 
and we were sort of at the end of our process, got a little wild and crazy, and, and I haven't used it yet, but I'm kind of looking forward to painting on top of those. Strange stuff, eh? Yeah. When printing, the screen is first loaded with the ink, and then a second pass effects the printing. This is sometimes called back flooding. It retards the drying of the ink and keeps the openings of the fabric from becoming clogged. I asked each artist for their view of multiples and additioned prints. This is Jeffrey Bishop. It's, it's kind of made mono, mono printing because each print is a, is a unique image and it's, you know, is, is part of that process, but the fidelity from image to image is sacrificed. I'm not interested in making 40 or 120 images that are identical to make money so much as I'm interested in making using the, uh, the, the the possibilities of print making for, for for generating you or for being what will ultimately be unique images this is for country to ensure that enough ink is laid on the paper and to compensate for the absorption into the paper two to four passes of ink were laid this is a uh, alchemy mixture here because the inks are not necessarily compatible. We need some paper to do some tab outs. The ink is a mixture of heavy varnish and silver pigment. A tap out is made to judge whether the ink is going to produce the right intensity of color. It acts as a binder for the powdered beads and silicon carbide. Let's print one. What the hay, man? Okay. Print one will dust the beads. And Okay. Now, without the beads, I don't think it's going to be too we bad. We can print one and then run a shot of newsprint, right? And then... okay. The reflective character of the coating is due to minute glass beads. Also, silicon carbide is used for black glitter. In some work, such as t-shirts, powdered flock is used to the same effect. The dusting is done outdoors, partly to avoid breathing the minute airborne particles. Safety is a big consideration by these artists. Beautiful. Michael Peterson provided the workshop setting. I asked him how he made the stencils for the screens. Uh, basically on the, the bigger screens, um, they were of type that was blown up very big from typewriter type, uh, very clean typewriter type, re-photographed and blown up to the size scale it was needed. Which from that point, it was transferred to uh, big screens using uh, a direct photo emulsion technique. Just a coated with a liquid emulsion and dried and then exposed by UV light. Direct emulsion photo stencil is one of the two major photo silk screen processes. In the Auville and French workshop, the indirect method was used. The large screen allows for selecting areas to be printed with smaller squeegees. You have a problem. Go. To print on metals and glass, the edges have to be smooth or else the fabric would be cut during the printing. Keith Beckley is a painter and a print artist and he works a great deal with construction techniques. You file in the edges on this yeah. stuff? Cut the screen? I asked him if the screen print was chosen for its ability to print on metal and glass typical constructivist materials. Yeah, that, yeah, well, I mean, you can, you can screen print on anything. You know, obviously we were printing on glass. And the, I mean, screen print isn't just, you know, ink on paper. And the, I, the galvanized and some of those things, I think, have real 
interesting potential. Some materials have to be given surface treatments in order to accept the ink. Galvanized sheet metal has to be degreased with acetic acid or vinegar. You want to scrub the vinegar around quite a bit, let it sit there a minute, and then rinse it with real hot water. Glass has to be cleaned too. Keith Beckley said this about making additions of multiples all alike. To me personally, that's a less interesting thing to do with screen print. If you're just doing sort of a flat run imagery on paper without any further embellishment, they just, to me personally, don't have any of the, the like the beautiful line quality that an etching has or the, you know, some of the potential uh, direct graphic application that you see in lithography. What it does have is, you know, no dependency on a press. So you can really move the things around. They're a mobile thing. You know, you can take a small screen and you can make multiple images with them. You can put it on yeah. galvanized metals, oh, leads, wood, all kinds of things like that. Those are more, you know, those potentials, those qualities make it unique. But as a pure sort of straight shot on paper thing, to me it doesn't stack up real well. Periodically, the screen has to be cleaned. Mike protects his hands with solvent-proof gloves and sometimes wears a respirator to protect his breathing. Ventilation is extremely important. Dennis Evans is a storytelling performance artist and a maker of art objects. I asked him if he liked the effects of silkscreen or its versatility. Actually, you know what I like about silkscreen process is it's versatile. You can screen all kinds of materials and take it through another set of processes. Like you can screen and resist onto a piece of material, copper or glass or something, and then etch it, and then, and so you can or you can screen an adhesive and, and apply things. So it's, it's got a lot more versatility in some ways as a medium. I noticed in some of the scenes that you appeared to be making up things as you went along. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's uh, characteristic of screen print? Mm -hmm. I do because um, the way the process is, it's so immediate and so fast um, that you can do and it allows for these things I was talking about that you can kind of improvise as you go, especially with a printer that's got a studio set up, you know. They have all those tools and all those tricks up their sleeves that you can see things happen through a day's work and you say, hey, can we do this? And they say, sure, give me a minute, you know, and they do it. That's um, just having all that talent there. In these videotapes of two workshops, I've given some impressions on the techniques of screen print, and I've included some of the ideas held by the participants. If there is a perspective unique to the Northwest, these people may have shown some of it.